Hey guys and welcome. Today I'm very excited to bring you my first video on Hogwarts Legacy and what better way to kick it off than to explain and go through the entirety of the story. Hogwarts Legacy took me around 22 hours to complete, admittedly though I was focusing predominantly on the storyline and I do have a lot of other things to do throughout the world. But I'm really excited to jump back in and to finish them off and let's eventually go for that 100%. But before we jump in, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below if you've played Hogwarts Legacy. Did you enjoy the game, the gameplay, and what do you think of the storyline? It would be very much appreciated if you could consider leaving a like on today's video. And if you want to see more content like this one, but for other games in the future, consider subscribing to the channel as well. But without further ado everyone, let's dive straight in. However, before we jump into today's video... I did want to ask you guys for a bit of help. Now, my good friend Amy and her partner Andrew are both running the London Marathon in aid of Young Lives vs. Cancer. This will be done in April, and it's a charity that supports children and young people aged 0 to 25 that have been diagnosed with cancer. The charity are so, so good because they provide day to day support for young people and their families following a cancer diagnosis. This can range from help with financial support, providing places to stay during treatment for patients and their families, and supporting young people just generally, and helping them get their lives back on track after beating the cancer and ringing that bell, or the bereavement support for families and for those who sadly don't win their battles. Now, this is especially close to all of us here as well, because at the age of 16, Andrew was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and the support that he received throughout that diagnosis and the treatment that he had helped him absolutely massively and he went on to smash it and it's way in the past for him now. But to show the support for all of the people that helped during that process and to help people that are in that situation as well because it's an awful one to be in, we want to try and give back as much as possible to them and this is exactly what we're trying to do here. At the minute on average, 12 young people are diagnosed with cancer every single day. And Amy and Andrew's goal is to raise around £2,000 to help Young Lives vs Cancer and support as many people, children, young people as they possibly can. They've managed to raise an amazing £916 as of recording this video. And I don't know that for a fact that we can help them smash that 2k barrier. I know that a lot of you guys may be able to relate to their story or may even have lived through it yourself. It's an awful thing and unfortunately there's nothing that we can do to flick a switch and stop it. It is something that we are going to unfortunately have to live with through life with friends, family, loved ones, whoever that might be, may go through this as well. So if there's anything we can do to support it, I'm all for it. And I'm really open to helping a good cause. So if any of you guys can relate to this, or if you want to just donate and help out, I'll leave the link to the Just Giving page in the description down below. And all of the money that's donated will be going directly to the charity. Nothing will be kept for anyone. All of the money that's raised will be going directly there. And of course, as soon as it does, I'll show proof on the channel as well, just to make sure that everyone is 100% confident that it does. Thank you very much for your support. Now on to the video. Hogwarts Legacy starts off with a letter that you've received from Professor Weasley relating to you joining and starting your Hogwarts journey. On September the 1st, as a fifth year student, we will join Hogwarts due to our unique circumstances. We start off in the centre of London in the 1800s, where a character named Professor Fig picks you up and takes us towards Hogwarts. With all of our stuff located on some sort of carriage behind us, Fig makes a comment that he's not seen someone take so quickly to a second-hand wand, and that we seem to be pretty special. However, suddenly out of nowhere comes a man named George Osric. And he tells us that Hogwarts is waiting for us. And the reason we leave September 1st today is because it's the start of the yearly sorting ceremony and great feast in the Great Hall. However, something didn't really seem right. As we leave London and climb into the cart, George looked a little bit worried before he stepped fully in. And as we fly off into the distance, we see someone watching us in the background as he disappears. During this long journey though, George asks Fig about his travelling companion, which was us of course, and who we are. Fig disclaims that we're joining Hogwarts as a fifth year student, and George responds that that's never happened before, although the two professors thought anyway. During this time, 
George pulls out a newspaper showing us of a character named Ramrock, the game's antagonist. He tells us that he doesn't really know what Ramrock is after right now, however he seems to pose a significant threat to the wizarding world. Not enough evidence was gathered right now though in order to show us what Ramrock was trying to do, but the person to tell George of all of this was Fig's late wife, Miriam. Although mid-conversation, our character glances out of the window of the cart, and we spot something in the distance, but we think nothing of it right now, and go back into the conversation. George then pulls out a device that Miriam actually given to him, just after she'd sent the letter asking for information on Ramrock. A device that couldn't be opened by George, nor Fig, and it was made out of goblin metal. There were no correspondence along with this device when it was sent. Almost like Miriam had to get rid of it extremely quickly in order to try and keep it safe and out of the wrong hands. Probably Ramrock. However, our character sees some form of glow on the symbol on this device. A symbol and a glow that others do not. We take it from Fig and the device suddenly opens. Merlin's beard. Wait. However, before we could take it, a dragon comes out of nowhere and takes George and the other half of the carriage with it, leaving us and Fig to tremble within this small half of the carriage. As we're falling in mid-flight, Fig uses the Accio spell to pull the key towards him, and we're transported to an unknown location. Are you alright? You're hurt. Perhaps a bit. Take this. It's Wigan World Potion. That stuff will write you in a second. We take a moment to process what the hell had just happened, and then that's when Fig mentioned that this key must be a port key. It brings anyone who touches it to a particular place in which it's created and programmed. However, it was also noted that this dragon was behaving extremely strangely. They should never act like that, almost like it was being controlled in a way. Anyway, we walk outside the cave, and we suggest that this port key has led us here on purpose. Somewhere in the Scottish Highlands, nobody really knows and Fig doesn't know either. However, we do see a ruin in the distance and perhaps that's where we need to go. Fig's late wife Miriam spent years searching for a type of ancient magic, one that seemed to have been lost to time and one that belonged to a very select few. Hogwarts was built on this ancient magic, so it must be to do with that in some capacity. Miriam's life was based on searching for this ancient magic and she wanted to know why it disappeared, as it was totally unexplained right now. Fig is unsure as to why and how she came into possession of this port key, but he's certain that it's related to this search. So we push forward and enter the cliffside, and Fig uses the repairer spell to repair the bridge that was once here, affirming further that someone built this place for a reason and we were meant to find it here. We walk into the ruins and do a bit of searching around, and suddenly, we come across another symbol, like earlier, but this time, it was on the wall. But, there looks to also be a room behind it, one that only we can see. Fig wasn't able to see this room on the other side of the wall, so our character touches it, and then behind us is something extremely unexpected. The rooms have almost flipped around, and we're now on the other side of this wall, with no explanation as to how. And when we turn around, we see an altar right in front of us, and there on top of it is a goblin sleeping behind a book. We walk towards it and Fig wakes the goblin, and it stares over us, stating that it can't be. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> it turns out that we're in Gringotts Wizarding Bank, and we're after vault number 12. So we jump into the cart, 
and make our way down the tracks. The port key that we came in possession of was then given to the goblin in the bank. Whilst taking our journey down to Vault 12 on the cart, the banker says that the private and hidden vaults are very, very rare. You need to be of great importance, wealth, or both to be given access to even one of these vaults. So it begs the question, what is this key for? Whose key is it? And why is this Vault 12 at the very bottom and heavily secured? However, when we reach the bottom and go through security checks, our character notices that the security goblin is wearing a band with the same glowing mark that the dragon was wearing when it attacked us on the carriage. However, we push forward and finally reach our destination, Vault 12. This goblin has been here for centuries and never has seen anyone go in or have access to Vault 12. So this is a momentous occasion for this goblin. The goblin opens Vault 12 with a port key and we walk inside to see what's there. However, the goblin was under strict instructions to let the people into Vault 12 and then shut the door straight behind them. So that's exactly what he did. I wonder if you might. The instructions for Vault 12 indicate that I am to grant access to the holder of the key and then close the door. Wait. Best of luck. <sighs> so we begin to search this room using the spell called Revelio, and it reveals a doorway in front of us. So we walk through this doorway. However, as we interact, we see this isn't an ordinary vault, and we apparently need to earn our way out of it. We move forward and see another glowing light, but this time it was on the floor, and when we interacted with it, it changed the floor and revealed a glowing statue that only we could see. We interact with the statue and cast the spell Lumos to position the reflection in just the right way to match the above statue. However, suddenly, a bunch of knights came out of nowhere and started attacking us and Fig. We finally take them out and then the room just goes black. However, when we cast Lumos, Fig was gone and we were all alone. We keep pushing forward and eventually a doorway is revealed. We walk through the newly formed doorway and at the center of the room was a basin of some sort with something floating at the center. We reach out and grab the object and suddenly a door opens behind us and it was Fig. We show Fig what we found and the artifact we'd seen floating above this basin. However, Fig tells us that this is no ordinary basin, but it's actually called a pensive. And this is used for viewing memories of the past. The thing that we picked up contained a memory of some sort, which Fig poured into the pensive, and we're able to see into the past. Follow my lead. is well hidden perhaps too well i wonder if the path we've created may be impossible to follow it will only be impossible for one who cannot see traces of ancient magic as i can your ability to see what others cannot will not be enough percival we are entrusting the one who embarks on this path with powerful secrets with knowledge others will do anything to obtain yes and if we are correct charles the witch or wizard who completes the trials will have proven themselves worthy of that knowledge and the responsibility that accompanies it. We've done all that we can. The memory shows a wizard named Charles Rookwood and another named Percival Rackham. Percival was able to see this ancient magic and it seems they created some sort of pathway for another wizard to follow. One that also could see this ancient magic. The knowledge they hold and this path was said to contain powerful secrets. One that, if fallen into the wrong hands, could be devastating for the world. The witch or wizard that completes the trials set by these wizards would gain the right to know this information. The glow surrounding them and these objects is traces of ancient magic. The magic that Miriam believed that had always existed, but could never see it herself. Miriam and George died searching for this magic and its meaning, and we might be the key to this. 
we were. Look rather different. However, suddenly, we hear something in the distance. It was Ramrock. Who were they? I don't know. But, sir, you shouldn't be in there. I was right. Ramrock. Seems my reputation precedes me. I was beginning to think no one was ever going to visit Rackham's Vault. And why are you here? No need for that. Just give me whatever it is you found here and we can let bygones be bygones. Rangrock was waiting for this day for a very long time. The people to access Vault 12. Had the key to the vault. <laughs> we see what kind of person Ramrock is from the very beginning here as he picks up the goblin that granted us access to the vault and killed him for not letting him in sooner. A goblin killing his own kind? Calling him a traitor? This guy has no remorse. Fig attacked Ramrock with his wand and he somehow evades it. However, suddenly out of nowhere, a large stone knight rises from the depths of the room and starts to attack us. Almost like a built-in defense mechanism left by the owner. This goblin was much more powerful than the rest with Fig's magic completely unaffecting him. However, we finally found a way out, and it was here that it seemed that Charles Rookwood and Percival Rackham wanted us to end up right here. Fine, sir. I've never seen so powerful a goblin. He seemed wholly unaffected by my magic. Where are we? <laughs> it can't be. It seems those who set up the pensive, the locket, and the path to both wanted someone with your ability to end up here. Come. We have a sorting ceremony to get to. Right outside Hogwarts. We finally enter Hogwarts after what was a very long and tedious journey and walk into the Great Hall. Oh, good. We haven't missed the sorting ceremony. I'm no expert, but that seems more appropriate. Now, I need to study this locket as soon as I can, but first I must contact the Ministry. They need to know what happened to George and be warned of Ranrock. For the moment, I ask that you keep all that's happened this evening between you and me. Of course, sir. Thank you. Ready for the sorting ceremony? Here we meet Phineas Nigellus Black for the very first time, the current headmaster of Hogwarts Witchcraft and Wizardry. Phineas Nigellus Black. Prepare yourself to meet the Headmaster. Fig, nice of you to join us. The sorting ceremony is over. There were complications. Complications? It seems the goblin Enough. problem has... Goblins. I've no time for rumors, Fig, and I'm rapidly losing whatever patience I had left. If you're lucky, we might still be able to get you sorted this evening. <clears throat> I'll be in touch.
The sorting ceremony was over and we were very late to it of course, but we make our way into the Great Hall and get sorted into our house. We take a seat, speak with the sorting hat and personally for me, sorted into the new house. Better be Gryffindor! However, due to an injury in the last season's Quidditch final, this year's game has been cancelled. Oh, and one more thing. Due to the unfortunate injury on the pitch in last spring's final, this year's Quidditch season has been cancelled. Enough! It's not as though I've banned flying altogether, but don't tempt me. You are here to focus on your academic futures. I'm sure you will have plenty to do before classes begin tomorrow. I said, I'm sure you all have plenty to do before classes begin tomorrow. Personally, <laughs> I thought this was a really good canon way of getting Quidditch out of Hogwarts Legacy. It's great because throughout, you'll also hear the characters in-game fight against the decision of this. And all the characters in-game want Quidditch to be there, almost like being the community. Whereas Black is like the developers and saying, no, no Quidditch. So that was just a cool touch there. It was also here that we met Professor Matilda Weasley. And she shows us to our common room. We walk up to the common room in the singing lady portrait, say our password, Grata Domum, and walk into the room to get some sleep. We eventually wake and make our way outside the common room to meet with Professor Weasley. As a fifth year student, it's very unexpected for us to join so late on almost unheard of as we've heard from many different people already so in order for us to catch up with everyone at the school classes spells and general knowledge professor weasley and the board have devised that we should use a book one that will keep track of everything that we learn and this is called our field guide this will give us the best chance possible to complete our owls or ordinary wizarding level exams at the end of the year as we move throughout the castle with professor weasley we learn that today we're going to be attending our first Defense Against the Dark Arts and a Charms class. However, during our conversation with Professor Weasley, there walks in Professor Fig. Professor Weasley walks off and Fig tells us to ensure that we leave everything that had happened yesterday with the Porky and Gringotts between us for now, until we know more around what happened, as it could attract some unnecessary attention from the likes of Professor Black and Professor Weasley. Fig will go away and do some research on everything that had happened the other day whilst we go to our two classes and get started. So we make our way there and we enter the classroom and we see two students battling it out. Professor Hackett! Perhaps you'd be good enough to blast each other to pieces on your own time. I get new students every year, but I only have one Hebridean black skull. With Professor Hecat being the leader of this class. It was in this class that we learnt Leviosa and dueled our classmate Sebastian Sallow. And Hecat was very pleased with our performance. Class was dismissed by the professor and we went over to speak with Sebastian Sallow, the one that we dueled. He tells us about an unofficial dueling club and that there is a forbidden part of the library as well that has some really interesting information within. If we ever wanted to go and give it an explore, to let him know. And this is where we start to see the more darker side of the Hogwarts Legacy game. Anyway, we have another class to attend today and that's the Charms class. So we make our way across the castle and walk into the classroom. And as we do, we see a student named Natty. She was very receptive and she was essentially the first person we spoke to and the first friend that we made, so we sat next to her. In this class, we learned the spell Accio, allowing us to pull objects towards us. Now that we've completed our first two classes, Professor Weasley wanted to see us in her office. And as we walk in, we see an elf beside her named Deke. 
until it dis until he disappeared. After speaking with Mrs. Weasley, we need to make our way to Hogsmeade to one, get ourselves our own wand, as the one we're using currently is a second hand wand given to us temporarily, and two, we need to go with a friend. However, Weasley mentioned to us to ensure that along the way to Hogsmeade, we avoid someone named Victor Rookwood at all costs and any of his associates. However, the main being Theophilus Harlow, a rather unsavory set of locals. We make our way to Hogsmeade with Natty and it's here that we walk into Ollivander's and are assigned our very own wand. I'll be right with... Ah, it's you. Um, just a moment, please. Ah, mm. hello, sir. I'm looking for... For a new wand, yes. It's about time. Yes, uh, about time. Well, you're our new fifth year student, are you not? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you are. Gerbold Ollivander's the name. But of course, you'll have heard of the Ollivander's, I'm sure. Finest wand makers in the world. It's a pleasure to meet you, truly. Now, come with me. Let's find you the perfect wand, shall we? Mm, uh, no, 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 not you. Um... Ah, yes, yes, hmm, powerful core, ten and a half inches, hmm, you might do. Here, give this one a try. Well, go ahead, swish. The first one that we try, however, doesn't hmm. quite work how we expected. Uh, once more, come on, really swish it. Well, this isn't a good match at all, is it? <laughs> uh, um, we'll find you something, not to worry. Mm. No, not you. Uh, uh, mm. Perhaps. Yes. A rare wood, 13 and 3 quarter inches, dragon heart string. Let's give this one a try. Ollivander pulls out a second wand and we try that. Oh, 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 oh goodness. Oh, looks like it's back to the shelf for you. Nope, uh, not this one either. This is proving to be trickier than I had anticipated. How perplexing. Um, where are you? Perhaps you? Uh, ah, there you are. Yes, I think you might be the one. Here, take it. But the third one, this was our wand. We customize the wand to our desire, purchase it from Ollivander's, and make our way outside. What do you think? Another wand, another beginning of a bright and magical future. <laughs> ah. Now, how did that feel? Good. Different. I sensed a sort of surge of some kind. A match. Your connection seemed particularly powerful. The right wand will learn from you, just as you learn from it. I'm eager to try it out. I would imagine so. A wand with a dragon heartstring core is capable of dazzling magic. And the bond between you and your wand should only grow stronger. Do not be surprised at your new wand's ability to perceive your intentions, particularly in a moment of need. That sounds wonderful, Mr. Ollivander. I'll let you get to it. Do come and see me again, if ever I can be of further assistance. We visit all of the locations needed to replace the things that were eaten by the dragon at the start oh, of the I game, that. That cool. collect all of our bits, and now off to find Actually, Natty. However, suddenly, so, just as we meet up with Natty, mask. we hear a hey. rumbling in the I background, and it catches our interest, so we go and investigate. Just... However, suddenly, just as we meet up with Natty in the square of Hogsmeade, we hear a rumbling in the background, and suddenly, a troll comes out of nowhere and starts to attack the village of Hogsmeade.
then a second one comes out of nowhere as well. What's going on here? All glowing like Ramrock was in the vault. Hmm. We finally take the trolls out. However, at the end, use some ancient magic from within us and completely destroy it. Here we meet Officer Ruth Singer and we offer to help repair the village. So we do this and then reward ourselves in the best possible way with a butterbeer. So Rona is the owner of the three broomsticks and would love to meet us over a butterbeer. However, as we walk into the pub, we come across Victor Rookwood meeting with Ramrock in a dark alley in Hogsmeade. You said you could get to the child when they came to Hogsmeade. That all you needed was a distraction. I gave you a distraction. I just watched a student take down your distraction. Who's this child? What are you not telling me? All you need to know is that if you cannot get to the child, then you have no value to me. Let's go. Did they see us? I don't think so. What was that goblin doing with Victor Rookwood? Ranrock is working with Rookwood. The goblin from the Daily Prophet. I knew I'd seen him somewhere. Quickly, let's get inside the three broomsticks. The trolls that we fought were sent as a distraction by Rookwood, and here we could see that Ramrock mentioned us. Presumably because we were the ones that found Percival's vault. We narrowly escaped the eye of Rookwood and escaped into the three broomsticks, where Serona gave us a butterbeer on the house. Now, what can I... Oh, there's a face I haven't seen before. <laughs> it's my first time here. Welcome. Butterbeer's on me. Heard about the attack. I shall be looking in on the other shopkeepers and residents shortly. Glad to see you two escaped injury. Thanks to this one, single-handedly took down a troll. Is that right? Well done. Thanks for this. My pleasure. I will say, trolls in Hogsmeade, that's never happened before. Something's not right. The only brutes we usually have to deal with are... <coughs> However, in walks Victor Rookwood. Was that Lodgok I saw leaving just now? <laughs> Your clientele's not what it used to be, Serona. Not to worry, Victor. Once the two of you leave, the caliber of my clientele will greatly improve. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Theophilus. Come now. No need for theatrics. I'm only here for this one anyway. My friend is enjoying a well-earned butterbeer. Only want a quick word. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said, my friend is busy. One would think you all had enough bloodshed for one day. Come, the Theophilus. The Three Broomsticks isn't what it used to be. Let's take our galleons elsewhere. Can't drink butterbeer forever. Seems you've made an unfortunate enemy. Watch your back. Rookwood and Harlow are worse than any troll you might encounter. Trolls, Ranrock and Rookwood. What are you not telling me? Serona so stood up for us and ensures that Rookwood backed off. However, Natty becomes concerned that we're not telling her everything. We promised to later, but it would probably not be the best time to do that right now. So we return to the castle. A short time later, we wake in our room and receive a message from our owl to meet with Fig, as he'd found some new information about our little adventure at the start. When we get into his office, Fig tells us that Ramrock used Goblin Silver to control that dragon at the beginning, the same thing that was used on the trolls that we fought in Hogsmeade. Ramrock is using Rookwood to find us, because Ramrock wants whatever we found in that vault above that pensive. The memory of Charles Rookwood and Percival Rackman. As you can see, 
Charles Rookwood and Victor Rookwood seem to share some very interesting commonalities in their naming. But more on this a bit later. Ramrock is using Rookwood to find us because what Ramrock wants is what we found in the vault above the pensive. Ramrock looks to be after the locket. However, Fig found an inscription on the locket and it revealed a map of Hogwarts. On this map, it revealed a section that we should visit which would potentially tell us more around what's happening here and what happened and why we were attacked. Although it was in the library, specifically the part that was off limits to everyone. Fig was going to accompany us to the library. However, he must deal with whatever the headmaster requires first of all. It was non-negotiable, unfortunately, so we had to do it all alone. However, if you remember earlier on, our classmate Sebastian Sallow was already very experienced in visiting this section of the library. So that's the first place that we start, in hope that he might know a way into the restricted section of the library without being seen, so that we can follow this map. We run and find Sebastian and ask him about this restricted section of the library, and if he would help us get inside. However, we need to be very careful about the librarian, Madame Scribner. If caught, detention, or maybe worse. However, this isn't our only problem here. We also need to avoid Peeves, the poltergeist at all costs. As he loves to tell on students and just cause havoc around the castle. So, we agree to meet Sebastian later tonight and sneak into the library. A short amount of time passes and here we see Hogwarts at night. A spooky place, but a really interesting one at that, with the restricted areas everywhere. So, we do need to be careful. We see the door that we need to go to. However, it's being guarded by two prefects. If they see us trying to get in, they will screw our chances over big time. However, Sebastian tells us of a spell that we can use called the Disillusionment spell, allowing us to pretty much go invisible and get around them. Not as good as a cloak, but the cloaks are very expensive, and this, well, it's free, so we use that. We learn it, and make our way into the library. However, when we get into the library, the librarian still looks to be there. Be gone by now. I said usually, but it'll still be alright. Do you see her desk behind me? The key is in the drawer of that desk. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'll create a distraction to draw her away. You focus on getting the key. I'll meet you outside of the restricted section. Sebastian said that she's usually gone by now, so he was surprised himself. But this would not be as easy as he first thought. Sebastian would do his best to try and distract the librarian whilst we go behind the desk and search for a key for the forbidden section. We'll meet him inside the restricted section once we have the key and once we've unlocked it. Sebastian mentioned that he used to be able to unlock this spell using Alohomora. However, the librarian knew Sebastian was using this spell to get in and eventually got caught. And she casted an anti Alohomora spell on this lock. So, a key is 100% required to get in. We finally make our way inside the forbidden section and walk down a flight of stairs. It was here that we learned that Sebastian keeps entering the forbidden section of the library to try and help his sister return to Hogwarts. His sister Anne was cursed and is suffering from a great illness because of it, in which nurses and medical staff aren't able to cure. So Sebastian is doing his own research in order to try and cure her himself so that she can return to Hogwarts and they can go through their journey together again. You know what? Fair play to the guy. His motivations are pretty cool. And I gotta respect it. We move through the dark, forbidden section of the library and come to a section where. Peeves? Sebastian Solo and his new little friend out exploring where they shouldn't be. Naughty, naughty, you'll get caught. Peeves, don't you. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell. <laughs> Oh, blasted Peeves! I've got to stop him or at least get to the librarian with a good excuse for all of this. How do I know you won't go to the librarian and blame this all on me? Why would I do that? I like having friends who are in my debt. Now go. Good luck in your search. Now, where has that damned poltergeist got to? 
Sebastian sprints off to try and stop Peeves from telling on us, or at least give the librarian a good excuse as to why we should be let off lightly, leaving us down here to continue our research alone. As we progress further down into the library, we started to go deeper underground, and finally walk into a room with what looked to be surrounded by ruins, and there, traces of ancient magic. We walk through the gateway that had opened before us, and there it reveals a long winding staircase that would light up as we progressed further down, and a huge marked door at the end of it, leading us further into the castle. The door led to a huge room, one that looked like no one had been here for centuries at the very least, a place called the Antichamber. We progress further on into the chamber and come across a door with guards armed at the ready, but we make light work of them. We follow it further down and finally find a pensive with a book floating above it. When accessing this pensive, we stare into the memory and see four wizards and witches, two of them being Charles Rookwood and Percival Rackham, and it looks as though that the land before them was suffering from a great drought, all of the crops dying out and the land really suffering and the people within it too. Even looking to the left and seeing a family of a father and two children, a boy and a girl, really, really suffering going without any water at all. However, Percival and the other wizards would use their ancient magic to cause rainfall, then cast a spell to induce wildlife and to grow different crops and make it more habitable. Percival stares over to the family, as the little girl seems very, very interested, and the brother, or the boy, very, very sick with the Black Plague. Here we find that this little girl is actually named Isadora Morganak, and when she's a bit older, she eventually attends Hogwarts. And she was also admitted as a fifth year as well, like us. Professor Rookwood, Professor Bacar. We understand that you are adjusting well to life at Hogwarts. I am. I am glad. Especially in light of your unusual situation, starting as a fifth year. As it happens, I was also admitted to Hogwarts as a fifth year. I've never heard of another like us. Miss Morganock, when we spoke yesterday after class, you asked about the beautiful swirls you saw years ago when we visited your hamlet. I recognized you all immediately. I cannot thank you enough for what you did. We were glad to help. And yes, I did see swirls of magic everywhere that day. My father insists it was my imagination running wild, but it was certainly real to me. It was not your imagination. Percival, Professor Rackham can see them too, but we've never known of another who could. I don't understand. What are they? The whispers or traces that appear when a particular form of ancient magic is wielded. Ancient magic? Few are capable of wielding it. Hogwarts itself is a stronghold of ancient magic. So if I can see traces of ancient magic, does that mean I can wield it too? With the proper training. But let us not get ahead of ourselves, Miss Morgana. Before I can train you to wield such magic, you must first master all that Hogwarts has to offer. A magic this powerful can do great harm in the wrong hands. It must be wielded by a select few. A 
As such, we ask that you not speak to anyone about what we have discussed here today. It was here that we also learned that Percival Rackham was also a fifth year student, and he'd never heard of anyone else who was a fifth year before him. On the day the wizards cast the magic over the lands, essentially ending the drought, Isadora mentioned that she saw bundles of light all around her. However, her father insisted that this was her imagination, due to him, of course, not being able to see it himself. However, Percival put those theories to rest and said it was not her imagination and that it was a form of ancient magic that only a few can see. These were whispers or traces of ancient magic that only form when someone that can see or wield this magic is close. And that's why it was showing for her. That was the end of the memory, but a very interesting one as well, and it sets the scene as to kind of what happened and who we should look to meet further on. Anyway, we make our way back up to the top of the library and stood there next to Peeves, begging him to not say anything, was Sebastian, who was eventually caught by the librarian. Clearly, detentions are insufficient. I'm afraid I must take this to the headmaster. But that being said... Peeves informs me that you didn't come alone tonight. If someone has coerced you, I would have you tell me. You're a bright boy. Don't waste this. There was nobody else. I came alone. Oh, Sebastian. What will your uncle say? <laughs> The librarian threatened to go to the headmaster due to him not being a first offender. However, when she asked who else was with us, he never ratted us out. Sebastian seems quite cool. Anyway, we need to get back to Fig and tell him what we've found. That Percival was able to see the magic and also wield it, along with another student who also started in their fifth year before us, and could also see this ancient magic, Isadora Morganak. An orthodox. It's inconceivable. It's... Ah, Fig. You have a visitor. I'll see what I can find out. Hmm. As we walk into Fig's office, we see Fig speaking with someone called Professor Sharp. Sharp mentioned he'll do some digging into Rookwood working with Ranrock before walking off. We tell Fig of what we've found, that the map led us to a book. We give this book to Fig, and as we look through, we can see that two of the pages are missing. We must find these two missing pages. However, in the meantime, Fig said that he must take the book with him to London to study it. As the headmaster is insisted that Fig goes to the minister about George Ostrich's death at the start of the game. George tried his best to convince the Ministry of Ramrock's antics for a very long time. So, when we know more, Fig will be sure to tell them. Anyway, a short time later, we hear that nearly headless Nick was looking for us in the Great Hall, so we head there to see what he wanted. When we spoke with nearly headless Nick, he tells us that he knows about the book that we'd found and about those missing pages. But how? The ghosts gossip between themselves, he says, and word does get around quite quickly. Nearly headless Nick was well aware of our snooping and also that Peeves can't keep a secret. He seems to think that he knows who had the pages. However, the information will only be shared if we do him a small favor. Go into the kitchen and get him some rotten roast beef. He, of course, can't carry it with him being a ghost. So we go to the kitchen, we tickle the pear in the painting, not joking either, and find this rotten beef. We finally take the beef and return it to Nick. Here he says that we need to give this beef to a ghost named Sir Patrick. Sir Patrick is the organiser of the Headless Hunt, a group of ghosts that gather for many headless activities. Richard Jackdaw, a now ghost, had the pages when he was still alive. So the plan was to take this rotting roast beef to Sir Patrick in an attempt to speak with Richard Jackdaw on the whereabouts of these pages. We finally come across Patrick when we reach the cemetery. As if by chance, he was pondering over wanting a piece of rotting meat. We take the meat to Patrick and ask for permission to speak with Richard Jackdaw. However, we only found his body. 
so we needed to go on the search for his head. However, the real goal of this was for Nearly Headless Nick to impress Patrick to try and get him to join the Headless Group, or the Headless Hunt Group. However, because he's Nearly Headless Nick and not Headless Nick, he doesn't quite make the cut. Literally. <laughs> anyway, we finally find Richard Dakdoor, and when found, we ask him about these pages. He knew exactly what we wanted to know, and mentioned that he stole the pages from Peeves a long time ago, when he was still alive. And potentially when Peeves was too. The pages should be where they were last. And that was where Jack Draw died. Richard tells us to meet him on the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Where we can travel inside. And it will show us where the cave is situated. That contained the cave in which the page led him to. And of course where he died following them. We make our way through the Forbidden Forest. And Jack Draw didn't want to go any further. As he didn't want to be faced with his dead body. We had to keep an eye out for a bird bath of some sort and then whisper a code into it to open the doorway. This would reveal the entrance to how, where we need to go and that's exactly what we did. However, suddenly out of nowhere, a bunch of Ramrock goons showed up. So we had to deal with them first and then onto Jackdaw's tomb we go. The cave itself looked huge and when activated three gongs, a bridge formed under the water. However, as we moved through, we're faced with the worst enemy of all, giant spiders. As we walk through, we see more and more of these different bridges and pathways form, when finally, we reach the main bridge. As we walk over it, there we see Mr. Richard Jackdaw and the Lost Pages. He was telling the truth. As we move to the end, a trend seems to be forming here. Another doorway into somewhere. We make our way inside, and the room starts to flood. However, there seems to be some form of magic protecting us from the water, so we're not affected by it. We carry on walking up a large flight of stairs and into a large, empty room. It be? In this room were situated four large portraits on the wall, one of them showing Percival Rackham. We had found the map chamber. Here we explained to Percival that we're the same as him and Isadora. We joined Hogwarts on our fifth year, and Percival responds to say that our presence here does not entirely surprise him. However, before we progress any further, we need that book that Fig took with him to London and place it in the center of the altar in the map chamber. It's then that we continue our conversation with Percival. But first, let's find Fig. Although before doing so, we have a really important class to attend to. Mr. Clothen, your attention please. Sorry, Madam Kagawa. Everyone, please welcome a new student to our flying class. Welcome. Hello. Hello. The goal of today is to remind all of you how to maneuver on a broomstick safely, as broom flight is, first and foremost, a means of transportation. This, I fear, some of you have forgotten. Flying was definitely a highlight for me. After we had finished, we were called in by Professor Weasley to meet her somewhere. Somewhere she said that our studies would be hidden away, without the worry of people spying on us or distracting us from getting our things done. We enter a corridor, and there, a doorway opens out of nowhere. The headmaster stopped me and I... Merlin's beard. I see you've wasted no time. Well done. Shall we? After you, Professor. We take a step inside, and Professor Weasley mentioned that this is called the Room of Requirement. This room will help and reveal to any student that's in need of help, and will change depending on the needs of that student, or requirements as, as it's in the name. You've given yourself quite a canvas to work with. Once we'd become acquainted with our room, 
we move to meet with Sebastian. He has something to show us. Sebastian shows us another room, one called the Undercroft, that not even the professors know about, or even the headmaster. This will become very useful later on in the storyline, so keep this in mind. However, Sebastian has a friend called Ominous. He was the one who originally showed him this room, and he promised he would not tell another soul. Ominous is a blind student, and his wand allows him to get around the castle and to the grounds as if he could see. He was not happy with Sebastian that he told us about this place, and we encounter him as we leave the Undercroft. Anyway, once we're past all of this, we move into Fig's office to tell him the latest news. We take Fig to the depths of Hogwarts to the room we'd uncovered, with the book in hand, and make our way to the map chamber. Fig places the book on the altar, and then the room started to glow, sending ancient magic across the entirety of the room and the floor, when suddenly, the centre of the room started to glow, with tiny white orbs floating all around. However, the centre, it revealed a map. Hogsmeade, the Forbidden Forest, and Hogwarts, with Fig reminiscing about his wife's life's work, and how she'd have loved to have seen this. If only you were here to see this. Shortly after, Percival appears within his portrait, and we walk forward to speak with him about this. This is where he tells us that the trials will appear on the map, one for each of the keepers, four in total, and these trials must be completed on our own. These trials were designed so that the power and the knowledge of the ancient magic doesn't fall into the wrong hands, and these trials were what were mentioned by Percival and Charles in the vault room at the beginning. It was here that Fig tells Percival that Ramrock also seems to possess this magic in some way, and we don't have the luxury of time or waiting. So, he marks the location on our map, and we start the first trial as soon as possible. We meet Fig at the first destination, a tower located near Hogwarts. We do a bit of scouting first around the tower to see why Ramrock's loyalists are here, and what they're actually looking for. However, we come across orders from Ramrock himself. Search the surrounding tower and look for anything to do with names. Hmm. Could he be referring to the Keeper's names? But how would Ramrock know the Keeper's names? Or even of the Keepers? Anyway, we enter the tower and walk to the top. And there is Percival again within his portrait. This is San Bacar's tower, a Keeper we are still yet to encounter. We have to make our way downstairs and enter a doorway that will be made up by a reservoir of ancient magic, which has now been unlocked by Percival. We make our way through the reservoir and finally we reach the trial. We finish it, and now it's time to learn the secret. And situated under a huge statue was another pensive. We stare into the pensive and look at this memory. Percival looks to be teaching her the ways of the ancient magic. However, she mentioned that her father lost her brother due to illness, which was the Black Plague which was going around at around this time when the game was set. However, he's never gotten over it since. And the pain has never left him, even to the extent that he hasn't said a word ever since he died. I don't think he'll ever recover from the death of my brother. It is agonizing to see those we love suffer. The trout was years ago, but the pain of losing him is as deep for him now as if it had happened only yesterday. 
Isadora wants to help her father by using this ancient magic and removing the pain from within him. What if I could help him, Professor? You do so much for your father already. It's not enough. I want to take away his pain. It is tempting, I know, to use this magic that you're mastering to transfigure more than the physical world. But human emotion is a potent force unto itself. Even the most well-meaning and competent witch cannot possibly know the consequences of irrevocably manipulating it. So I'm to watch as my father's pain destroys him. It is not your pain to take. Fast forwarding a few years into the future, and Isadora became a part of the Hogwarts staff and was the new defense against the Dark Arts teacher. She invited Percival Rackham, Charles Rookwood and the other keepers would also join her at her home that evening to catch up and to see how she's been, in which they all happily accepted, of course. This was the end of that for now. But we make our way back to the map chamber and there was another portrait filled. Charles Rookwood, the one from The Visions. We introduce ourselves and there Charles is filled in on the details by Percival. We inform Fig of what we've found so far However, before we can complete the next trial, Charles and Percival need a chat about the current situation. Anyway, off to Hogsmeade we go to speak with Serona. We asked Serona around the goblin that she was speaking with the day that Ramrock tried to take us from the three broomsticks. Lodgog was the name of the goblin. He's a friend of Serona's and he had been for years. However, Lodgog was as worried about Ramrock as us. We want to speak with him, of course. And Serona said to us that if we're looking for an alliance, Lodgok is a very good one to have. We find Lodgok situated at a pub down the road. So we move there and ask him about Ramrock. And at first, he seemed very wary as you'd expect. But if Serona trusts us, so does he. Years ago, a witch stole a goblin relic from the goblins. And when it was stolen, Lodgok and Ramrock had a falling out. If this relic is retrieved, as it's only accessible to the wizarding kind, it might repair the relationship between Lodgog and Ramrock, allowing him to find out more information. However, only after this relic is retrieved will Lodgog tell us everything he learns from Ramrock. So, in order to do this, we meet Lodgog at the tomb in which this helmet is situated. This is called the Helmet of Urcot. This witch was a collector and purchased it from a goblin that created it. The goblin way of thinking, though, is that whoever made it owns it. So apparently purchasing it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> so we have all that we need and we enter the tomb to collect the helmet of Urquhart. We push through to the end and there laying in front of the tomb was a dead Ashwinder, one of Rookwood's goons. It looks like someone's already made off with the helmet. So we need to report this back to Lodgok. We need to get to the helmet before Rookwood does else we're going to have no leverage against Ramrock and it will make finding out what he's doing much, much harder. There's a raiders camp nearby where we believe the helmet might be being kept. So we push there to see if they have it. And what do you know? They did. We take this helmet back to Lodgok and now this should earn Ramrock's trust and repair the relationship between them both. However, when we're speaking about the next steps, Lodgok slips up here saying that this might put Ramrock off his search. But he never mentioned a search. What does he know that we don't? And why won't he tell us? Lodgok goes off to find Ramrock, whilst we return to Hogwarts to meet with Sebastian. During our venture in the library, we promised Sebastian that we'd go with him to visit his sister Anne, who was cursed a long while ago. And as we get there, we can see exactly what this curse has done to her. Everyone's convinced there's no cure, but I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it somehow. Shrivel figs cannot reverse a curse. Nothing can. The sooner you accept that reality, the better. But we haven't tried everything. There is no cure. When will you accept that? Never. I can never accept it. <laughs> Now, 
what you've done. I'm sorry. His uncle was very adamant that Sebastian was wasting his time, but he will not stop until a cure is found for Anne. Sebastian takes us to a place where his sister got the curse and is adamant that this was caused by the goblins. He told us how Anne was cursed, that the house seemed to be on fire, so she ran out trying to save anyone that she could and to see what was going on. However, it was completely smothered in goblins. However, out into the distance, she heard a voice. Children should be seen and not heard. A blinding blast followed. They didn't even give her a chance to run. She wasn't able to get a glimpse at who or what did this though. However, when we reached the top, what do you know? This place seems extremely familiar. The vision, the drought, turned into Greenland. This is where the four keepers were stood in that vision. However, as we move into the house to investigate on top of the hill, inside was a portrait, one that was completely destroyed. That's when it clicked. This house belonged to Isadora Morganak, and this was her portrait that was destroyed, probably by the keepers. But why? More on this later. As we look around the house though, we notice a section that was blocked off. We clear it, and it reveals a basement, where we find entries into Isadora's travels. The first two entries of this detail her see many people flowing in and out of the doctors, stating that there are so many people suffering from the Black Plague and losing their loved ones, causing similar pain that her father would have. With the power of this ancient magic, she has the power to help these people, to heal them and to rid them of their torment. However, in the corner, we see a wall that, for some reason, stares straight into the undercroft within Hogwarts. The secret room that Sebastian told us earlier about in the story. We take a step through this wall and another section of the room within the undercroft reveals itself and there hung on the wall was something called a triptych with a note straight in the center. This note showed a rune symbol of some sort, one used by the keepers. The plan is to attempt to follow this symbol and try to find the missing piece of this triptych and hopefully this will open the door to more information about Isadora and what the hell happened. Fig sends us an owl and mentions that now is a good time to talk next steps. So we make our way down to the map chamber and get discussing. It was here that we told Fig around Lodgok and how he's trying to help us get some more information. And after this, Charles tells us that it looks as though Ramrock is searching for something in Rookwood's castle. Rookwood returned there in his portrait to have a look around to see what was going on but stayed out of sight to prevent his portrait being destroyed, like we saw with Isadora's at her home, and he seen a load of Ramrock's loyalists surrounding the castle. It was here that we told Charles Rookwood that his descent, Victor Rookwood, is a dark wizard, in which he was extremely shocked. The next trial is situated at the Rookwood castle, so we need to make our way there as soon as possible to complete it. When we get to the Rookwood castle, we see that Ramrock's loyalists and Rookwood's Ashwinders are all in an alliance of some sort, albeit not a friendly one at that. However, as we walk inside, there was Ramrock and Rookwood talking. We managed to bring me the child. We wouldn't need the child if you hadn't sent a dragon to retrieve the container. I spent months and countless ministry favors tracking. You let them board the carriage. My options were limited once I knew it would be inconveniently beyond my reach of that infernal school. Have you not acquired enough power here? I allowed you to tunnel under my family home. Allowed me? You are here only because you are descended from a keeper and may at some point inadvertently become valuable. We had an agreement. I will share with you the power that I discovered if you locate the stores of magic that are yet to be found. So, unless you want another demonstration of my power, a power that you one day hope to wield, bring me the child.
To break this down, Ramrock is digging a tunnel underneath Rookwood's castle to try and figure out more around this ancient magic. Rookwood was tracking the port keys container for months on end. However, Ramrock became impatient and sent a dragon being controlled by him to retrieve it and kill everyone on board. So there was no prisoners and no witnesses. The only reason Ramrock is working with Rookwood is because he is the descent of a keeper and he might become valuable at a later date. So, Ramrock knows about the keepers, but how? The agreement between them was that Ramrock would share the power that he discovers, the ancient magic, if Rookwood finds the stores of magic that they're still yet to be found at this point. Ramrock somehow holds this power within the goblin metal that he carries on him. But why are they after the stores of power? If they can't capture the boy, which is us, then this is their plan. We enter the castle and tell Charles that they've found the stores of magic. Ramrock has learned the ancient magic and also knows that Charles Rookwood was a keeper. Anyway, we must complete the second trial in order to learn more. So we push forward, reach the pensive, and it reveals the next memory. I must say I'm curious to hear of Isidore's travels. Do come in. Please, have a seat. It was here that we saw the four keepers walk inside Isadora's home, Isadora, where she wanted to show them something. We are something. All most intrigued to hear. We're ready. Isadora's father walks into the room. I have something to show you. He hasn't talked since her brother's loss. Father, these are my colleagues from Hogwarts. However, like she said when she was younger, the ancient power is enough to take the pain away and can be used for good. On my travels, I confirm that which I've always believed. That we have the power to take away pain. Isidore removed the pain from within her father as the other four keepers watched and placed it into a jar. Isadora. Have you done? I took his pain. This is uncharted magic, Isadora. You can only see what has been sealed in the jar, and we do not know what power that may hold. But the traces of that magic are different from what I've seen before. The traces of magic removed were different to what we've seen before. This was very, very bad. and went against everything that Percival and the other three keepers stood for. We moved back to the map chamber and tell the keepers of what had happened and what we'd saw in the past. Here, a new keeper appears, an old headmistress of Hogwarts, Professor Fitzgerald. She will be getting her trial ready for us soon. However, in the meantime, we should see if we can find anything else on Ramrock and Rookwood. We get some updates from Logdgok around the Helmet and Ramrock, and also Sebastian wanted to meet us too. We started by going to see Logdgok first, and he mentioned that the plan didn't work as we hoped. However, we might still be able to get the answers that we're after by visiting one of Ramrock's nearby goblin mines. Although, we need to bring someone with us that can speak gobbledygook. Earlier on in the story during astronomy class, we met someone called Amit who mentioned that he was able to speak this language, well, <laughs> kinda. Amit was happy to join us on this journey, and we make our way to Lodgok. When we get there though, Lodgok mentions to us that the helmet didn't have the effect that he thought, and that Ramrock seen straight through Lodgok, stating that he must have had a wizard accompanying him in retrieving it, as it wouldn't have been possible just on his own. Lodgok then mentions some critical information pertaining to how Ramrock knows about the Keepers and more. An ancestor to Ramrock named Bragbor, a renowned metal keeper by trade. Not too long ago, Ramrock sent Lodgok to collect a recently unearthed set of Bragbor's journals. These journals described repositories in which Bragbor would create, commissioned by a group of witches and wizards, the Keepers. These repositories are large metal receptacles crafted out of goblin metal, possessing the ability to hold such ancient magic which is, of course, what we've seen on the likes of 
Ramrock's armor and also the ones on the braces for the dragons. Ramrock recruited an army and his loyalists to locate these repositories, the first being within Rookwood Castle, where we found him and Rookwood of course, and completed the first trial. There were five names mentioned within these journals, Rackham, Fitzgerald, Bacar, Morganac, and Rookwood. This is exactly what the notes of Rookwood's castle from Ramrock mentioned, search for anything relating to names. Ramrock was convinced that these repositories contain a magical power that the wizarding world wanted to keep for themselves. He is determined to take it for goblin kind. Logok tells us that within the mine, there'll be a series of plans that we need translating. Logok will wait for us out of here when we return. As we enter the mine and make our way through, we start to go through these plans. It looks as though that Ramrock is building enormous drills, and this is of course to harvest the repository's power and dig through any terrain required to get to them. We report back to Lodgok and tell him of what we'd found, however he doesn't quite know of any other location that Ramrock will target next. Although, there is a question we need to ask Lodgok. If he shares Ramrock's views, why is he helping us? I expected Rookwood Castle to be deserted when I arrived to begin my search. So was surprised to find a witch there who had set up a sort of improvised research site. She was studying something so intently that she almost didn't notice me. When she looked up, I thought she would react with fear or disdain. But instead, she did something that I will never forget. Without a moment's hesitation, she smiled and asked me to sit with her. She told me that she was a researcher and showed me a small, oddly shaped container with a strange symbol on it. She was certain it was made of goblin metal, but was unable to open it. She wanted to work together. Miriam. Yes. But how did you... Professor Fig's wife. He told me of her research. And I know of the container. Ah. The reverence with which she talked of goblins and their intelligence and skill, it caught me entirely off guard. I'd never been treated with such respect by a witch or wizard. So, to my surprise, I let her study the container if she would allow me to search the castle on my own. We parted ways, with her promising to share what she'd learned. More of Ranrock's recruits arrived, and we began to dig, eventually locating the first repository. Ranrock was thrilled with our discovery, but furious when I told him about Miriam. Berated me for trusting a witch when I heard she had been killed. You think Ranrock murdered her? I don't want to believe it, but I don't know. After that, something shifted in me. I had seen how the power from the repositories was transforming Ranrock, transforming all of them. I could no longer remain a part of it. Thank you, Lodgok, for telling me this. Mm. I tell you all of this so that you understand what is at stake. <sighs> Ranrock never found all of Bragbor's journals, but the ones he did find suggest that Bragbor, at some point, built a repository far greater in size than the one beneath Rookwood Castle. What you've discovered here today worries me deeply. If Ranrock learns of the location of that repository, I fear we shall be destined for a great war. I will find out what Ranrock knows. Watch for my owl. So, Lodgok and Miriam were working together and promised to share with each other everything they found out. However, Ramrock never found all of Bragbor's journals, but Bragbor built a repository much greater in size than the one below Rookwood's castle 
and the other areas. If he finds this larger repository, we might be in for a huge war. This is what we must find and ensure that Ramrock is kept away from it. However, in the meantime, Loggok will find out anything he can around Ramrock's next steps and he will let us know if he does find out. It is probably also really important here to mention the motivations of Ramrock and why he hates the Wizarding Kind so much. Now, this is on a side quest a little bit further into the game, but it's important to know at this point because we won't be going into that side quest. So this is what you need to know. In 1709, Ramrock stumbled upon an illegal dragon camp which was used for illegal breeding. He would visit this camp in secret to every chance that he could, finding the creatures absolutely fascinating. However, would never make his presence known. After weeks, he summoned the courage to speak with the wizard that was in charge. However, when walking up to him, he noticed that the wizard had dropped his wand. This was Ramrock's opportunity to do a nice deed for this wizard, pick up his wand and hand it back to him whilst introducing himself. However, the sight of a goblin with a wand made the wizard enraged with anger and he beat Ramrock almost to death. From that day onwards, Ramrock despised all wizard kind, sees them all as cruel and this is why he's trying to harness all of this ancient and magical power to give to goblin kind and to make them the most powerful wielding beings. It's pretty sad to be honest, it's pretty deep, like damn. I mean, he's probably gone a bit too far but you can kind of see why he hates them all so much. However, now, once we're finished with Lodgok, Sebastian wants to meet us too by the Overlook, the location that was shown to us on the triptych. So we make our way over there and see what information he's got for us. The triptych that we found earlier has some resemblance to a mine that Ramrock is in charge of nearby. So again, like before, we try to be stealthy here. We enter the mine and try to find the rune symbol that was on the triptych and make our way into the bottom of the mine. And there... It shows that Isadora was here at some point. We find more journal entries when we enter in her study room by the looks of things. And in one of these journal entries, it shows that Isadora became lightheaded at one point and suddenly passed out. She thought that she had fallen and knocked herself out on something. However, there was no mark nor injury. However, the pain was throbbing in her mind and she hoped that it wasn't the Black Death Plague going around at that time. This was straight after removing the pain from her father. Is that potentially when... Could she have potentially inhaled some of this dark magic? We don't know so far, but I'm sure we'll find out going forward. We find the missing piece of the canvas. We return to the Undercroft and place this piece of the canvas on the triptych. And immediately, Sebastian knew where this was, but stated that we're in for more trouble. Ramrock has taken over a huge mine in that area, and it will not be easy to find the last piece. However, when we tell Sebastian about Lodgok, he flips out completely, wanting no part of it, as he was convinced that Goblin Kind was the reason behind his sister's curse. He walks off in rage, and we need to keep pressing forward, so we make our way down to the map chamber to see if Fitzgerald has finalised her trial. We reach the map chamber and let the keepers know of the drills that Ramrock was creating, and that this is really bad. If he gets into these larger repositories, then it could mean that the whole plan is over. However, we're told that the next trial is pretty nearby the headmaster's office. Fitzgerald used to be the headmaster of Hogwarts, so it only makes sense that that's where the next trial is. She has a portrait in the office, so we just need to meet her there. However, in order to get into the office, we need to be there when Black isn't. So, we go to Fig's office to inform him of this news. The office is locked behind a password that is only known by Professor Black himself and his personal house elf. However, in order to get it, Fig tells us what we need to do. Take Apologies Potion and impersonate Black to get the code from his house elf. We drink the Apologies Potion and make our way to find the house elf. How do you feel? Uh, incredible. I won't forget that taste anytime soon. <clears throat> How do I sound? 
Convincing. I've taken the liberty of transfiguring your robes. As we discussed, you'll need the password from Scrope, who could be anywhere in the castle. You might look for Professor Kagawa. She's taken to badgering the poor elf about Quidditch in the hopes that he can convince Black to change his mind. Thus far, unsuccessfully. I see. But what if Professor Black sees me? Leave him to me. I shall tell him when to meet a liaison from the Ministry in Hogsmeade. That should give you plenty of time. Thank you, Professor. I suppose we'll meet again in the map chamber. It's rather strange to hear gratitude coming from Professor Black. <laughs> I'll see you there. And as we walk through the corridor, we run into Professor Sharp. He tells us that he'd been able to create the potion to remove the boils that Black had found on him somewhere. You'd asked me about a particular potion and I... Well, I... I did? I did, yes. Well, spit it out, Sharp. I don't have all day. Probably best not to discuss it here, sir. I assure you, Sharp, you may speak freely. Very well. I've brewed the cure for boils you wanted. I can drop it by your office when it's convenient. <laughs> of course, yes. No need for all the cloak and dagger. Simply have a student deliver it. A student. Very well, sir, if you insist. I do. And thank you, Sharp. I just hope you've brewed enough for all my boils. With Black initially being very discreet about it, of course, we are not Black and we're impersonating him. We found it really, really funny and requested a student to deliver it to Black's office, despite Sharp trying to be pretty discreet about it. Even going to the extent of messing with students as we go down as well, telling the likes of Gareth Weasley that he's getting great at these potion making and to bring a few samples by Black's office. Bro, our character is cold, you know. <laughs> we walk outside and speak with Madame Kagawa as well about Quidditch. Sadly, we don't reverse Black's decision though. However, on our way into the Great Hall, as that's where our house elf is, we see Professor Weasley. And this was a moment where, if this was me, I would absolutely shit myself. And then we enter the Great Hall, and standing at the foot of the Great Hall next to the altar is the house elf of Professor Black. We ask Scrope for the password, and he tells us that Professor Black told him to tell the password to no one, even himself. However, the password is in French, and it related to the Black family. We get the password from Scrope, and now it's time to make our way into the office. We use the password to get in and it reveals a flight of stairs. We make our way up the stairs to greet the old headmistress. Approach the pedestal in the antechamber and read the book that appears. We're sucked into the book and we look to be actually inside of it. As we walk inside, we need to push on and find Professor Fitzgerald, avoiding death at all costs. We finally get to the way forward and there it is, the invisibility cloak. This allows us to move freely around the enemies and reach the next step. The next step? A wand. Is this the Elder Wand? We push forward and fight off waves of different enemies and reach the end. Until we're greeted with the final piece, a stone known as the Horcrux. Is this the Deathly Hallows? We find Professor Fitzgerald towards the end and make our way to the altar to see her memory. Isadora, what you did for your father was remarkable. Wasn't it? And Percival needn't worry about the strands of emotion or the traces that this magic leaves. I found a way to contain all of it. You haven't stopped. Goblin Silver. You spoke to a goblin about this. Don't worry, he has no idea what we're containing. We don't know what effect any of this may have. The emotions, the dark traits. You sound like Percival. And as it happens, I do know. It is a source of strength, of focus. Somehow it enhances my ability to wield magic. I don't follow, Isadora. I think we can harness it. Power like this is not to be toyed with in the wrong hands. You saw what I did for my father. Only have imagine the good we could do. Everyone is in some kind of pain. What are you doing? Breathe it in. Oh, can you feel it? Oh, 
Oh, it's a door. This must stop. All of us. You've kept this power to yourselves for so long because you fear it. I choose to embrace it. Within the memory, Professor Fitzgerald and Isadora are walking outside of Hogwarts somewhere. Isadora was trying to continue with this extraction and the use of this ancient magic, even speaking with goblins and getting them involved. Isadora believes they could harness this power. Everyone is in some kind of pain. She then takes her wand and tries to remove the pain from the Professor Fitzgerald's chest. She seems to be embracing the power and has almost gone power mad. However, the professor moves away, preventing her from doing so, and is horrified from what she's just seen. We return to the map chamber and speak with the keepers, and greet the final keeper, Sam Bakar. Isadora looked to be inhaling painful emotions, almost thriving off them. How did she harness this power? We fill Sam Bakar in on the events with Ramrock. However, he will require some time to confer with the other keepers, as his trust for people is not entirely where it should be after the events from Isadora and of course the standard that she'd set. However, a short time later, Sebastian sends us a message through his owl and tells us that he's found something. So we take a journey across the Scottish Highlands to meet him along the coastline. Sebastian found droves of Ramrock's goons going toward a mine. So that's exactly where we're going. We finally enter a place called the Tower Tunnel and hope it will tell us more around Ramrock is planning. It's here that we start to find more around Isadora's missing journal entries and start to understand more around what she's doing with the extra power that she can't harness. There's only so much power that someone can take in, right? So where does the rest of it go? So much haze and power, making Isadora feel like she's doing something great, but really she's causing much more destruction to herself and the world of magic than she knows. Could the repositories be the place that this extra power is stored? However, as we continue through, we see that Isadora was in fact here, and that this could be where she honed this ancient magic. As we enter the chamber, we come across another note, one referring to our latest trial's memories. The headmistress, Professor Fitzgerald, will not help Isadora, and she shares the same feelings as Percival. Isadora did not want this ancient magic to lay dormant. She wanted to share it, help more people by removing their pain, and felt the keepers were incredibly greedy, keeping it all to themselves. She, she worries she may not be able to find someone in her lifetime that would share this work with her. However, Isadora has left them a trail to follow, and perhaps they can heal the world. So, really, Isadora's a... So really Isadora's intentions and motivations were not that bad at heart, but unfortunately her disillusionment but unfortunately her disillusion had cost her. However, as we begin to research around, we find the final piece of the triptych canvas. The one thing we don't understand right now though is why did Isadora go to this length to share this knowledge with the world without knowing what the keepers do? If she'd understood and took the time to listen and learn that from them, maybe things would have been different. We place the final piece of the canvas on the triptych and behind us appears a pensive. We look inside and it's a memory of Isadora and her father. I cannot bring my brother back, father, but I can give you peace. Please, have a seat. Isadora, <laughs> we are all most intrigued to hear. We're ready. I've something to show you. Father, 
These are my colleagues from Hogwarts. Father hasn't spoken since my brother died. On my travels, I confirm that which I've always believed. That we have the power to take away pain. Isadora. What have you done? I took his pain. Thank you. It did indeed. Of course it did. It's goblin silver. I need something much bigger. All right. It would help if you could tell me more about what it is you're storing. Magic. Left over from a spell I devised to remove pain, but if used correctly, its power can be used to do even more good. Why would you want to store such magic away? I only need to keep it safe until I can convince my colleagues of its worth. Magic like this unnerves them. Oh, everyone's ready to wield such power. Perhaps not. Someone will be. In this memory, it shows her motivations leading up to the night the Keepers attended a house, and she took the pain away from her father and transferred it into a container, sealing it away. Her father speaks for the first time, and later on that day, a knock on the door. A goblin named Bragbor gave her some goblin silver to store this ancient magic, the pain that was removed from her father. However, Bragbor was intrigued as to why she wanted to store this magic with multiple vials of the stuff in the background as she goes to show and collects one. She'd been very busy to say the least. She wanted Bragbor to create large devices made of goblin metal, the repositories, to store this magic until she can convince the other keepers of her plan. However, a short time later, Lodgok sends Sanel stating that he'd found a mine somewhere near the shore and that he's going to go and destroy the drills that Ramrock had created. We arrive and take a minecart deep into Ramrock's mine to find this drill and see what's going on. However, when we get further into the mine and destroy the drill, there was Ramrock. You. That is unfortunate. No matter, we will build another. I found this one lurking outside. Lord Gok, come to make amends, little brother. I came to stop this. What is this you've brought me? It cannot be. All this time, you knew. You knew where it was. Are you all right? I'll never understand you, Lord Gok. So, Gollum, that witch did not consider you an equal. She, like all wizard kind, sought only to use you. You're wrong, Ranrock. The young ones are especially deceitful. They are taught to hide their disgust for us as they exploit us. Astonishing that our ancestors ever trusted each other. All this time, looking everywhere for the final repository, searching in vain for Bragbor's last journal. Wasted my time chasing a child. And my little brother knew where it was all along. 
But now, I don't need you. I don't need any of you. I was bringing it to you. You are a traitor to our kind! No! Abomacadabra! hand no wonder he tried so hard to reason with him the next trial will involve a massive amount of magical skill san bakar mentioned and we must engage with any beasts a part of the trial anyway we meet fig near the coast we remove some of the weeds covering this statue of some sort of what looked to be like a dragon's head this head resembles a fearsome beast known as a graph horn this would somehow open the way forward but we must bring one here and go from there we make our way to the shore and suddenly as we walk around the corner oh no <laughs> we fight and eventually take out the graph horn and it suddenly starts to charge at us however instead of finishing it off we kneel it stands firm but almost respects us and we climb onto its back and make our way back to the trial we charge our way back to the pensive chamber and attempt to open the doorway and once we stand on the podium, it starts to glow, and we walk inside to see the portrait of San Bacar and make our way to the pensive. Hello, Isadora. Isadora? Son, I'm glad you're here. Isadora was not at her home. I know. Her father. First of all. What is it? It is as though he was stripped not only of his pain, but of all emotion. Everything is much worse than I feared. Neve was right. Isadora hasn't stopped. I've just learned that she has been wielding that magic on students. We must gather the others. Turn to your common room, all right? What have you done? Students, Isadora. Everyone feels pain. And why? Because of your arrogance? Your obsession with secrets? He won't suffer any longer. Not my father. Not my students. No one. Isadora. Set down your wand. Professor, you taught me to hone my power, not throw it away. I did not teach you this. Expelliarmus! <laughs>
Кадавра! After learning of this, he returned to the map chamber. The caverns below Hogwarts, that's the location of the final repository. The strands of emotion within that repository cannot be destroyed, so they did all they could to hide it and keep it safe, which is the reason why they're called the Keepers, keeping people out and keeping this magic hidden away, and the repositories. The repository is protected by an ancient magic, however to get around it, we must craft a wand with each of the artifacts that were found on the Keeper's pensives. However, Ramrock might be trying to drill his way through, and with the power from all of the repositories put together, well, it might be enough to breach through the ancient magic protecting it. We need to get to Ollivander's and create this wand immediately. So, that's exactly what we do. It is done. I should warn you, I've never seen a one like this before. My suspicion, as Professor Fig implied in his letter, is that it serves a unique purpose. I doubt you shall find much use for it otherwise. I understand. Thank you, sir. As we walk outside Ollivander's, though, with the wand in hand, Rookwood. I'm afraid you're on your own. I've ensured that we have a moment to ourselves. Oh, come, come. No need for such theatrics. In light of what Ranrock now knows, you must agree that our interests are aligned. Our interests will never be aligned. You would let goblins take what is rightfully ours? The final repository belongs to wizard kind. We would be fools not to work together. What's that you've got there? Might this sudden visit to the wand maker have something to do with our mutual pursuit? I have no idea what you're talking about. That repository is my birthright! Charles Rookwood wouldn't have wanted you near it. <laughs> the arrogance. Should have known better than to try and reason with a child. But then Rookwood says this. I've always said, children should be seen and not heard. Remember that? An icy voice drifted out from somewhere in the smoke. Children should be seen and not heard. A blinding blast followed. They didn't even give her a chance to run. Rookwood cursed Anne. Rookwood and his Ashwinders teleport us to a compound to fight, and we get into a one duel with Rookwood, and after countless battles, we defeat Victor Rookwood. We return to the map chamber to inform the Keepers and Fig of what just happened. All of the trials are now completed, under circumstances that were very, very intense. The trials and all of the other tests were there to ensure that us and all of the Keepers would make the same choices. Whatever is found in the repository must never be freed or destroyed. It must be left where it is. It's way too powerful, and it should remain stored there. 
so we make our way forward and head on into the Keeper's Caverns. We make our way into the room, and there, the goblins. They've managed to drill straight through the Hogwarts terrain. We must go now. We take out multiple hordes of enemies that Ramrock had sent in, and finally... Oh no. Castle's defensive charms. Get us this way. We shall make quick work of them. Oh. They got this. Let's freaking go. Just like the ending of Avengers Endgame. This is so sick. <laughs> Sharp jumps down and helps us with the troll, sending a pillar flying towards us. It's just about to land on us when suddenly, Professor Weasley absolutely smashes it out of the park and saves us. She gives us our pathway forward, narrowly escaping Ramrock's loyalists. And here it is, the doorway to the repository. doorway slowly opens and there in front of us is the repository we made it i'm relieved we got here before ranrock i can't believe this is it the repository has been under the castle for hundreds of years Fig asks us what we intend to do with the power here. Many lives have been lost because of it, because of the research and the goblins. Do we store it away under the castle? Or do we plan to open it? We can follow the path of Isadora, or we can follow the path of the Keepers. Man, honestly, I sat here for a good few minutes thinking of my decision on this one. I was really stuck. I wanted to see what would happen if I was to free it, but of course I wanted to stay on the Keeper's path. So, we decided to free it. <laughs> we told Fig that we'd free it. I bet he was like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> However, Ramrock walks in. God. The arrogance of wizard kind. Goblins built this repository. It belongs to us. Enough, Ramrock. It was never yours. I've been wanting to play with this. Miriam's wand. If she'd simply handed over the container, all of this could have been avoided. Foolish, self-important witch. <coughs> Seems you're two of a kind. She didn't know when to give up either. <laughs>
we take Ramrock down and harness all of the ancient power within the wand we created into the repository where it all belongs. Professor Eleazar Fig. I dare say he was a beloved professor to many of you, certainly a long-standing colleague to his peers. A famed adventurer and seeker of knowledge, he built a reputation charging into the unknown, brazenly disregarding both discretion and safety, providing perhaps a rather unfortunate lesson for us all. His devotion to adventure was rivaled only by his dedication to Hogwarts. And of course, to his wife, Mary, uh, Midi, um, whom we lost much too soon as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Professor Fig represented the best of all of us. Oh, he could be deviously clever, possessed a brilliantly inquisitive mind, and was the most loyal of friends. But perhaps it was his remarkable courage for which we will all be forever indebted to him. If not for Professor Fig. Well, I can say with confidence that if not for him, many of us, let alone Hogwarts, would not be here today. Those that knew him best will agree that we must now honor him as only Hogwarts can, by wisely, resourcefully, Justly and bravely facing all that lies ahead. <clears throat> to Professor Fig! I can't believe we lost Fig. I didn't know him as well as you did, but I know he was a good man. Glad Weasley spoke for him. She honored him well. Fig will be well remembered. Sebastian, there's something you should know. 
It's to do with Victor Rookwood. I heard a rumor that he confronted you outside of Ollivander's. Sounds as if he faced quite a fight. The rumors are true, and I did. But it's not that. Just before Rookwood attacked, he uttered something familiar. The same words Anne heard before she was cursed. Children should be seen and not heard. Wait! What... what are you saying? It wasn't one of Ranrock's loyalists who cursed Anne. It was Rookwood. It was Rookwood all along. This... this can't be. It was the loyalists. It's always been them. The night Anne was cursed, all she saw were goblins. Once Rookwood allied with Ranrock, Isadora's estate became of interest to them both. That's why Rookwood was there the night Anne was cursed. He was working with Ranrock. When he saw your sister, well, he didn't want anyone to know. So he cursed her. And she's never been the same. So cruel. Rookwood deserved what he got. Thank you for telling me. It wasn't a goblin. I suppose I owe you an apology. All this time I thought goblins were the enemy. But it was never that simple. I have a lot to think about. Let's speak again soon. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Hogwarts Legacy. A vengeful goblin named Ranrock wanting to almost prove a point and make goblin kind the most powerful beings in existence. Victor Rookwood going away from his family's good name, turning into a dark wizard, and the five keepers, Isadora being the cause of all of this, of course, but her motivations were to only try and help people. But of course, it had gone too far, and here we are today. Overall, this is my first 10 out of 10 game on the channel. Absolutely amazing game. Game of the year for me, 110%. It was fantastic. I loved every minute of it. And it took me 22 hours to finish on the lowest difficulty. And that was just me rushing through as well. However, I'm so excited to keep playing. And I'm going to try my best to 100% it as well. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below, everyone. But of course, I really hope you have enjoyed today's video. Leave a like if you have. Subscribe for more content coming. If you've made it this far... Comment down below, high wing. Comment high wing down below if you've got this far. I'd love to know. But we'll see you all next time.